the Synovus MCA Gem Coupler Device and System. The gem microvascular anastomotic coupler rings are made of high-density polyethylene and surgical-grade stainless steel pins. The coupler system consists of a reusable anastomotic instrument, reusable coupler forceps, a sterilization tray, and a vessel measuring gauge. The coupler system is available as a complete system or as single items. Indications the GEM microvascular anastomotic coupler device is intended to be used in the anastomosis of veins and arteries normally encountered in microsurgical procedures. It is intended for use with veins and arteries having an outside diameter no smaller than 0.8 mm and no larger than 4.3 mm and a wall thickness of 0.5 mm or less. Instructions for use. These instructions for use are designed to ensure proper use of this device. They are not intended to serve as a reference to surgical technique or to supersede institutional protocols or professional clinical judgment regarding patient care. 3.0 mm coupler size or smaller end-to-end -end anastomosis. Using conventional microsurgical technique, mobilize a minimum of one centimeter of each vessel end. Using vascular clamps, clamp off the vessel and irrigate the vessel openings. The coupler requires a greater amount of free vessel within the clamps than a conventional suture repair. After gentle dilation, estimate the outer diameter of each vessel using the vessel measuring gauge. If there is a discrepancy between the two vessels, use the measurement of the smaller vessel to choose the appropriate coupler device. Then select the appropriate sized coupler device. Turn the anastomotic instrument knob fully counterclockwise. Insert the coupler into the anastomotic instrument. The matching indicator arrows on the coupler device and the anastomotic instrument should be pointing toward each other when loading. Ensure that an audible click is heard for proper loading. Remove the coupler device from the protective cover. Visually inspect to confirm that both rings are seated at the bottom of the U portion of the jaw and that the pins are not bent. If the pins are bent, do not attempt to straighten them. Instead, use a new coupler device. Place the anastomotic instrument perpendicular to the vessels, with the coupler jaw assembly near the two vessel ends. Pull one vessel end through one of the coupler rings using forceps. Take a bite of approximately 1 to 2 pin diameters of the vessel wall and intimal lining. Evert 90 degrees and impale onto one pin. Proceeding in a triangular fashion, impale the vessel firmly onto every other pin, completing three pins. Complete vessel placement on the ring by impaling the vessel onto the remaining three intermediate pins. Ensure that both the vessel wall and the intimal layer are fully impaled on each pin to reduce the risk of thrombosis. Repeat steps to impale the other vessel end on the second coupler ring. When both vessel ends have been suitably impaled, visually inspect to ensure that both rings are seated at the bottom of the U portion of the jaw. Bring the rings together by turning the anastomotic instrument knob clockwise. Before ejecting the joined rings, gently squeeze the end of the opposed jaws with a small hemostat to ensure ring approximation and a tight friction fit. Turn the anastomotic instrument knob further clockwise to eject the joined rings. Check the anastomosis under the operating microscope before opening the vascular clamps. To remove the jaw assembly, turn the anastomotic instrument knob fully counterclockwise. Press the release button, located near the arrow on the anastomotic instrument, and remove the jaw assembly. 3.5 mm coupler size or larger end-to-end -end anastomosis. 
Begin by following the assembly instructions provided for the 3.0mm coupler size. Observe that the pin placement technique differs for the 3.5mm coupler size or larger end-to-end -end anastomosis. Take a bite of approximately 1 to 2 pin diameters of the vessel wall and intimal lining. Evert 90 degrees and impale onto the pin situated closest to the open part of the jaw assembly. Impale the opposite side of vessel opening on the pin directly across from the initial pin. Next, impale the vessel onto the pins located near the sides of the ring, keeping the vessel as evenly spaced as possible between the four pins. Continue the vessel placement on the ring by impaling the vessel onto the two remaining pins near the open end of the jaw assembly. Complete the procedure by impaling the vessel onto the last two pins near the bottom of the jaw assembly. Should the vessel wall tear during impalement, remove the vessel, trim the end, and repeat the procedure. All coupler sizes end to side anastomosis. Using conventional microsurgical technique, mobilize a minimum of one centimeter of the vessel end. Using vascular clamps, clamp off the vessel and irrigate the vessel opening. Mobilize a minimum of two centimeters of the side vessel and clamp off the vessel. When performing an end-to-side anastomosis with the coupler device, the lumen of the side vessel is narrowed slightly. For this reason, the diameter of the side vessel should be larger than that of the end vessel when completing such a procedure. Estimate the outer diameter of the end vessel using the vessel measuring gauge. Select the appropriate sized coupler device. Follow the same assembly instructions provided for the 3.0 mm coupler size. Place the anastomotic instrument perpendicular to the direction of the end vessel. Place the end vessel on one ring as described for end-to-end -end anastomosis. Create a transverse incision in the side vessel of a length no greater than the internal diameter of the coupler device selected. Grasp the vessel wall and intimal lining near one end of the transverse incision and pull through the remaining ring. Evert the vessel wall and intimal lining 180 degrees and impale the vessel first on the pins situated nearest the incision end. Proceed in a similar manner at the opposite end of the incision, impaling the vessel wall and intimal lining on the pins situated nearest the incision end. Complete the pinning procedure by everting the vessel on the remaining pins. Bring the rings together by turning the anastomotic instrument knob clockwise. Turn only until the ejector rod has just started to move the now joined rings. Before ejecting the joined rings, gently squeeze the end of the opposed jaws with a small hemostat to ensure ring approximation and a tight friction fit. Check the anastomosis under the operating microscope before opening the vascular clamps. Remove the clamps and inspect the anastomosis to confirm that it has been satisfactorily completed. Service. For customer or technical service, please use the following contact information. For more information, please contact Synovus Micro Companies Alliance or visit our website at www.synovusmicro.com. Synovus Micro Companies Alliance, the microsurgeon's most trusted resource.